Test one, two, three. Oh yeah. Hey, howdy, hey everybody, Scott here, and today we're gonna learn how to survive in the winter with foraging. First of all, I recommend that you don't try to survive just with foraging because uh, in the winter plants don't like to grow and sometimes they are buried under a bunch of snow. Uh, that's not usually a problem for me where I live, the, the snow part, but uh, there's not a lot growing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, more favorable to be able to trap or fish or hunt a little extra in there, but we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're gonna pretend that I am just giving you the plant-based part of this, and that you have another member of your survival group that is the you know hunting or trapping expert, and then somebody that is the uh, shelter building expert, so that uh, we can divide the the work up like that. Okay, let's look at the food. First, let's look at some trees. Uh, some trees that are available over a wide area would be pine, cedar, that is juniperus cedar, birch and elm. Now on the pine, the needles can be chewed up and you can get the juices out. Not a lot of calories there, um, but they have a pleasant flavor. It varies from tree to tree, but, but some of them are downright pleasant. And you can make a nice pine needle tea. It has antiviral properties. It's good stuff, vitamins and, and all that. Um, the, uh, the inner bark will give you some calories though which is a good thing to have in the winter when you're trying to stay warm and all that you know shivering and keeping warm is burning a lot of energy. Um, so this is not the wood of the tree and it's not the bark of the tree but there's this cambium layer. Um, just under the outer layer there's a, a thin uh, light colored layer that is soft enough you can chew on although personally I've never enjoyed it plain. Some people do especially in the spring when it starts getting sugary so that might be nice but I would rather um, dry it and powder it and uh, stir it in with something else. But um, yes, yeah, some people will uh, fry it like bacon, but that's a that's a calorie source right there and a protein source, it's a lot of protein. Then juniperus, ce uh, juniperus cedars, uh, specifically the eastern red cedar. It's uh, juniperus virginianus, uh, something like that. That one um, we're sort of getting at the edge of the edibility area. It, it is edible, but it's more of a spice. You, you use the berries. They'll start green, they'll turn blue, and they can hang on the tree for years. It's a, it's a long process. But those are used for flavoring meat. And if you're just trying to survive by eating a whole bunch of squirrels or elk or whatever, you may want to flavor some of that. So there you go. Birch is another really good tree uh, for, for the edible bark, and it's easy to identify because of the, you know, the bark. Also, it burns really good. It has a lot of oils in that outer bark, so even when it's wet, it, it can catch a flame and burn. Pine and birch are both pretty good burning woods. And then elm. The inner bark on the elm is edible. The leaves are too, but this is not the right time of year for the leaves. Um, and sometimes, even if they are edible, they're you know tough because they're growing older. The, the young leaves, you can eat those. And the, um, the seeds. Well, we'll talk about the seeds in a little bit, but you, you may, depending on your species and your area, I mean your tree species, not your species. I assume that that you're Homo sapien, <laughs> but um, they may they may form their seeds, and you could eat those too. Okay, there's just some trees you can eat. Um, there's not a lot of fruit out this time of year, but there is some. Uh, cranberries will tend to hang on to the plant through the winter in, until something else eats them. The same with huckleberries. Now, when I when I say huckleberries. Um, I, I am talking about huckleberries, but usually I'll I'll just say basically blueberries because um, they're they're all very similar and they just have a uh, you know differences of height or the, or the time of year that they uh, that they bloom or the number of seeds or something small. But if you see something that is basically a blueberry, where it looks like a blueberry, it has that little um, five pointed sort of crown at the bottom of the berry, um, then 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 eat it. It's good. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna poison you and kill you. It's it's something edible. Um, hackberries also hackberry is a real identifiable tree because of the warty bark and then the uh, they have frequent leaf galls uh, are common. It, of course, if it's winter, you may not see those. Um, but yeah, hackberries will hang on the tree for a long time until something else eat them, eats them. And rose hips too. I guess I'll go ahead and mention that on eh, just about all of the plants that I'm going to mention here, I will have a profile on those either on the Facebook group or uh, or on the one, one of the YouTube videos. So if you want more detailed information on these, you you can find it here, or or you know go out on the internet and you know I'm, I don't have the monopoly on information. 
Um, but yeah, rose hips are good for vitamin C. They also have some uh, good uh, antimicrobial properties or immune boosting. Uh, I don't want to be misspeaking off the top of my head now. I've been looking at some other plants, and I think I got my wires crossed. Hey, you know something fun about all of these, except for the huckleberries, is that, um, <coughs> pardon me, is that all of these have or can have that five-pointed star or crown at the bottom of the berry, the, the opposite side of the stem. Roses aren't in the same family as the uh, cranberries and the huckleberries, but cranberries and huckleberries are in the, the blueberry family, and they all share that characteristic um, for, the, for the rose hips. It's just sort of a happy coincidence. So finding that, that crown on the bottom of the berry, that five-pointed crown, it's a remnant of the calyx, that is a good indicator that you have found something good. Okay, seeds, as promised. Dock, maple, and elm. Um, dock is not actively growing at this time of year, but the seeds will stay on the, uh, the stem of the plant. Um, yellow dock, curly dock. Um, I think that several, if not all, of the other docks are edible, but usually when people talk about dock, we talk about curly dock, and it's a, it's a really widespread plant, so, so that's, that's what I'm talking about here. But the, uh, the seeds, will this time of year, year, they'll just be dry and brown, but they're still edible. Um, probably what you want to do is go ahead and run over them with a rolling pin to uh, break away the... All, you, you can rough them up in your hands and uh, to, to get the chaff off of them, but you probably want to run over the seeds with a rolling pin to break that seed coat so that your body can actually extract the nutrients from it rather than just passing them through, you know, as fiber. <laughs> um, but if you, uh, if you eat the, some of the chaff, that's not going to poison you too. It, it might give you a bellyache if you're sensitive to extra fiber, but it's not poisonous. Um, the maple seeds are edible, and elm seeds are also edible. You may not have them depending on your area and the species of trees around you and the exact time of winter we're talking about, but I include those because it, it is possible. You may find those. Okay, let's talk about roots. Usually I say that the good calorie sources from plants are roots and fruits. And while fruits are not very common at this time of year in the winter, roots are. They're, they're still there. So dandelions, super packed with nutrients. And... Uh, being roots, they do have a fair amount of calories, not a bunch. Uh, Jerusalem artichoke is a member of the sunflower family. So if you find a plant that looks like a sunflower, and then in the winter you come back and you find that you know dried dead stalk and you dig into the ground, if it has some tubers, congratulations, that's a Jerusalem artichoke. You can eat it raw, you can eat it cooked. Now, I, I recommend for maximum calorie purposes that with both Jerusalem artichoke and with dandelion, uh, since, since we're doing this for winter survival and calories, I'm going to recommend that you cook them both. They have a substance in them called inulin, which uh, is a prebiotic. It's, it's good for your gut flora, but you yourself, you don't digest it that well. And if you cook it, it goes ahead and it breaks down into something that you can use a little better into a sugar. It, so it sweetens them up, it improves the taste, and it also um, liberates more calories for your own survival. Um, here's Doc again. Um, so when you when you harvest those seeds from the top, you can dig down and you can get the the root. You want to dry it first. If you don't dry it, it can uh, it can make you vomit. Uh, you know, even if you dry it, it might make you vomit because it tastes awful. I'm sorry, it's the, it's a true story. Dock tastes awful. Dock root does. It's like it tastes like dishwater vomit. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it. But if you need the calories, and, and it's it's very healthy. It is very, very healthy. It's packed with nutrients, but it's also, it's packed with this flavor. Oh, it, it's it's wretched. Uh, but we're trying to survive here. Um, burdock is another one. That one may not be so so bad tasting. Actually, some places they, they grow this um, to eat it as a, as a root vegetable. I think it's called uh, gobo. is a specific variety. Depending on the species you have, results may vary in the taste, but, but um, that, that's another good one. And then cattails. The cattail root stays there. It's a little bit of work to process it because you don't just eat the whole things. The, 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 the fiber can give you an upset stomach. You just want to extract the starch from it, but uh, that's another good one. There may be some greens available. Now, if you're up far north and everything is under a few feet of snow, okay, Greens are probably out for you, but if you're if you're not quite so far north, there's a good chance that that you may still find a few things growing on the ground that are green and edible. Um, plantain, 
uh, might be available through the winter. I've noticed that this winter we've had a lot of plantain out, uh, you know, around my house in the yards and the fields. Um, dandelion leaves will also stay there, and uh, they actually improve in flavor in the winter. So eat some of them up. All right, nuts. Um, acorns, hickories, walnuts, and pecans, they fall off of the tree in fall, and then, <coughs> ooh, pardon, pardon, unless the squirrels and the deer got to them, they're still going to be there. And they have a uh, uh, they have fatty oils, non-volatile oils, that can tend to oxidize and spoil. But the good thing is, with those cool fall and, and cold winter temperatures, they probably haven't spoiled. Now, if they've, got a, if they've got a crack or a hole in them and they've been exposed to a lot of oxygen, yeah, they may be spoiled, so you may come across some bad ones. But probably you're going to come across a lot of good ones, too. So don't overlook the nuts if you have them available. And if the, the one of the pictures there, the, uh, the walnut there is a what's called a black walnut. Now, I, I know that's green, but after it falls off of the tree, it, it's going to start to... the the skin, the husk, is going to start to break down and turn black, and it's going to stain your fingers. So, I mean, wear gloves unless well, you're trying to survive. Maybe you don't care, but if you want to survive and not have stained fingers, make sure and wear some gloves. Um, but uh, just because the outside of that turns black, that doesn't mean that the nut meat on the inside of the shell has gone bad. It hasn't. Um, actually, one year I, I harvested a bunch of these, way more than I could process, and I ended up tossing them in a compost bin, and for years after that, I would have little walnut trees coming up. So, um, yeah, don't get thrown off by that. And then lastly, sap. There are a lot of trees with edible sap. And you can, you can tap a tree. It, it's not just maples, but you can tap them like you would a maple tree. And you can collect the sap and you can drink it as is. It won't be super sweet because it's very dilute with water, but you can drink it as a water source. Or if you have a lot of uh, you know wood available, like if you've been uh, if you've been eating the inner bark of the you know the pine trees, and so you have a lot of extra wood available that you can burn to keep warm, um, you can boil the sap down until it becomes a syrup, or you can boil it all the way down until it becomes sugar. Just keep a stir in it because if you don't, you're going to end up with a hard candy, which which is still edible, but it's a just a chunk. Um, but yeah, maples, hickories, pecans, walnuts. Muscadines aren't really trees, but they also have an edible sap. I've never met anybody that's actually made muscadine syrup uh, from, the, from the sap, I mean. I, if, it, uh, if it tastes anything like the muscadines, that would be wonderful, but I, I, I kind of doubt that it would have the muscadine fruit flavor. Um, sycamores, too, and birch. Maples have the most sugar, so it takes the least boiling down of the maple sap to become syrup, but you can do it with any of those. Now, there's a downside here, and that is that the sap is not always flowing. It's going to vary from species of tree to species of tree, and with a few more things, but basically, the guide is, if it's above freezing during the day and below freezing during the night, then that's basically the time of year that the sap will flow, and that you can tap a tree and get sap out of it. So there you go, there's your winter survival. Now, one last alternate survival strategy, uh, go down someplace tropical where they don't have winter, and then you don't have to worry about winter survival. You may have to worry about hurricanes or something here on the beach. But uh, <laughs> that's going to be it. That wraps it up. And um, we're going to bring this video to a close. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Keep your eyes out for plants and zombies and snow. All right. Happy foraging. See you, everybody.